minutes. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm struggling some to figure out why we're here today. Uh, as the ranking member pointed out earlier, federal funds haven't been used for abortion in 30 years. Federal funds have not been used for abortion in 30 years. So if the problem that we're tr truly trying to solve is to keep taxpayers from footing the bill for abortions, mission accomplished. However you feel about it, mission accomplished. <coughs> but keeping taxpayer funds away from abortion isn't why we're here. Instead, this committee, on a regular basis, seems intent on picking away at a constitutionally protected right with misleading backdoor legislation. Whatever your personal feelings about abortion, and whether you would want a woman in your family to make that choice or not, we must all recognize that that woman has a constitutionally protected choice to make about her own body. To create new restrictions on the coverage of abortion by private insurance companies in the guise of taxpayer protection, I think is outrageous. And I, I have some questions for the witnesses that I, I'd just like to probe. Mr. Durfling, you're starting with you. I, I respect entirely your belief, based on sincere and strongly held religious tenets, that abortion is wrong. I have the same respect for my colleagues, uh, so many of my colleagues on this committee. But here's where we disagree. America is a multicultural society. We don't all subscribe to the same religion. I don't believe that one religious view should be imposed on others, and using the massive power of the federal government to force others to share your religious views or penalize those who view differently is a dangerous approach. So I just have, I'd like to explore that with you some. If a majority in Congress had strongly held religious belief that blood transfusions were immoral, would it be appropriate for that majority to ban blood transfusions? We're not talking about banning anything, sir. Would that, be, would that be appropriate for the majority to do that? That's the question I'm asking you. We're just engaging in some hypothetical situations, Mr. Durfman. No. Okay. And what about vaccination? Some, some have strongly held beliefs on the matter of vaccination. In your view, would it similar, similarly be permissible for a majority on, in this Congress to ban vaccinations? No. A and for people who hold religious objections to alcohol and tobacco, Mm -hmm. There is insurance, and maybe this one gets more at this issue that we're talking about today. There are insurance plans that provide coverage for smoking cessation and treatment of diseases born out of alcohol and tobacco use. If a majority of this Congress felt that there is no reason taxpayer dollars should be used to support uh, treating disease born out of alcohol addiction, should we be able to, to take that action akin to what this legislation does with respect to abortion? No. Nor should the government force and, people and let me, let me to just fund those things. And let me just go on, because I have a few more and I have limited time. I'm sorry. But this is uh, all irrelevant uh, to the bill at hand. Uh, it's, it's not irrelevant. Ultimately, sir, the... You're making a fundamental... No, no, no. Let me just... Let me, explain my own, let me explain my own position, which I thought I've already done, but I'll do it again. What well, the suggestion in this bill, what this legislation does, despite the argument that we're protecting people from the federal government, is it says that... that the massive power of the federal government can be used to shut down a constitutionally protected right. That's what that's this legislation. That's absolutely false. That's that's what this legislation does. Now, what I have I'd you like read the bill, do, sir? What I, I have indeed read the bill, Mr. Section Governor, 304. I appreciate, I appreciate you asking. And and the other thing that's so troubling to me. Well, I have one more question, it's just on the same topic, just to finish out the the list. Embryonic stem cell research. Now, I, I know that embryonic stem cell research, uh, despite its, its potential life-saving revelations, um, is controversial in some parts. Should Congress be able to impose tax penalties on people who purchase insurance policies that cover cures that were devised from embryonic stem cell research? There aren't going to be any cures from embryonic stem cell research, and this is I, not Mr. about Gerflinger, penalizing. Mr. Gerflinger, I do not, I will not, I don't have the time to engage in that debate but I would respectfully suggest to you that perhaps as you've encouraged me to take another look at the book, that you might well take a look at, at the research that's being done right now 
in research centers across the country before you suggest that there will be no treatments or cures to come from embryonic stem cell research. And for all of the people, for all of the advances who have been made and the people whose lives could be improved by it, I'd ask you to reconsider. And finally, I would just suggest to Professor Alvarez that she is exactly right, exactly right, when she says that what we ought to be doing is focusing on a real women's agenda. I agree. And my hope is, Mr. Chairman, that as we go forward in this Congress, we might focus on a women's agenda that acknowledges that women earn 70 cents on every dollar earned by men, and that minimum wage increases is a women's issue because two-thirds of minimum wage workers are women. And then if we raise the minimum wage 30 percent lower, than, which is 30 percent lower than what it was in 1968, that we will see an immediate reduction in poverty among women, and that workers in 145 countries in the world have earned paid sick days, and the U.S. has no mandatory paid family medical leave policy. They were one of three countries in the world and the only industrialized country to not have mandated maternity leave. This is an agenda for women that this House of Representatives ought to take up. Uh, I appreciate your making that point, Professor Alvarez, and I yield back. I thank the gentleman.